Welcome to the Miniatures Paintbrush. Today we're going to talk about painting up this Iron Priest for my Space Wolf army. How? Hello and welcome back. All right, thank you, Sean Richards, for the additional music that's laying down on this track. We're going to start off with some black primer. Um, I'm trying something different again, uh, making this a lot shorter and more detailed, more concise when it comes to my uh, paint and chat kind of thing. Um, and I really do hope you like it. Thank you for joining us here at the Miniatures Paintbrush. All right, so. Uh, I'm going to start in with some cold gray, just zenithal uh, on top there. And you can check out how I base all my space marines. I do have a video and I'm going to link it right up there. Alright, next up what you do is we're going to hit some non-oil shade uh, just in the deepest recesses uh, where the ceramite of the armor splits and you have those joints. Next up, we're gonna have some Stino Res White Primer. I do base the bone with white primer sometimes. Other times, I bring, base it with a brown. All right, bone white there, just to get the highest highlights as well. Uh, next up, some Serapon Sepia, which I use when I'm not using um, any kind of seals or anything like that to create different variation. I use this combination here to get that nice bony feel to it. All right, some pale burnt metal, some copper and some gold, one to one to one, uh, just to give that really dark kind of gold look to it. All right, some dead white and some black, one on one. One to one ratio, get that gray in as well. Okay, so next up we're gonna do some medium flesh tone, which is a great base for yellow. And I'm gonna use like yellow pauldron on his knee. And then afterwards, some flat yellow and some intense yellow ink, which I got from the intensity set from Scale 75 Fantasy and Games. Or no, it's just a Scale 75. All right, some medium flesh tone uh, to get the leather bits. I'm starting out with medium flesh tone and I'm giving variation to this leather. Uh, next up, some Barrett Brown, his fantasy and games. Again, giving a lot of dimensions to, to leather gives it a lot of character and you need a lot of depth when it comes to leather. Alrighty, some shrapnel red. Again, another layer for the leather. Um, and I really do like creating a lot of different layers for the leather because uh, it really creates that realism that you want with leather. Next up, some uh, black primer. And I'm going to prime up all the places that I want to be a black and B uh, I want to be metal and what you do is the good undercoat is black for metal because it's translucent the metal paint all right some coal gray is next up to bat now I'm trying to create highlights on the actual uh, cords that are coming from the side of his legs so I'm gonna hit the little areas just glaze in some lighter colors where I think the light is hitting it creating some little hot spots I think overall it adds to the realism. Alrighty, so uh, next up, some pale burnt metal. That's what we're doing. You just kind of metalize all the different places. Um, I really like working with metallics. I did non-metallic metal before, but now really getting into that. All right, some edge highlight with some sky blue. Uh, and I do this for not only the gun, but I do it for the top pieces there. I do apologize for any camera issues. I'm still learning how to use the camera. Um, I'm gonna fix, I'm gonna have the fixed uh, non-moving um, 
version of the focus. Uh, so this way I can, you know, control that in and out. All right, some heavy brown with the base coat. Uh, now heavy brown is a great base coat for red. It's a great base coat for uh, yellow as well. Although I do use flesh tone sometimes as well for yellow. Um, heavy brown is also a good base coat for leather as well. So it has a lot of lot of different uses. All right, some Scarlet Intense Ink Red, some Carbo Crimson Layered, and we're just getting these wires that are coming out of the side of this priest. And building up those layers are important. Make sure that you let the paint dry, especially the inks dry, before you add on to the next layer. All right, some heavy blue and some intense ink blue. We're doing the same type of concept when it comes to those wires that we did for the red. But instead of having that brown base, what we're doing is since it already has like a light blue base, it's fine to just go straight at it. All right, a little bit of cool gray dry brush. And now I'm doing a little stone uh, amulets that are hanging on the side of uh, the the priest and I, I really do find that you know hitting it with a nice little dry brush has the nice little edge highlighting and density to that stone all right some flat green and some intense green again adding different color variations to the wires that are hanging out on the side of him and what I do like uh, is that it does have that variation and this model itself has so many details that you can really pour yourself into this and you know come out with so many little things and your eyes just attract this so much GW does amazing models all right some dead white uh, as a base and then some green a scorpina green and uh, we're going from dark to light and if you ever want to do like some kind of gem kind of reflection or some kind of glass hammer refle reflection what you want to do is dark on top your highlight color in the middle and then go all the way to white on the bottom and then come back to the darkest area and put like a little pinhole or a little streak of white on top so it looks like here's the enter point for the light and on the bottom it's illuminating the inside and coming out through the bottom so the light is actually going through whatever it is that you are actually painting and it's a great great effect and I'm taking my time and doing this on camera so you can see how I actually do it now you may go a little bit too far with the dark and that's okay you hit it back with the scorpina green and you kind of level it to where it looks real uh, you can do the same thing with the white when you add the white on the bottom if you go a little too crazy with it that's okay you can put some more scorpina green in the middle that mid-tone really allows for control of how it looks and you know, as an artist, you need to take a step back from whatever it is that you're painting and really grasp uh, all the details and see if it really does look real. Even if you have to walk away from the table sometimes and come back, maybe even the next evening or the next uh, hour or so, and take a look at it again and see if it really looks convincing. Is that a lens or is that a gem or is that a, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to paint? Is it really uh, indicative of what it is that you're trying to paint? And uh, sometimes actually going through those motions and actually going back at it at some other time gives you a different point of view. Now, I remember doing something like this when I played video games where I couldn't beat a boss monster or something like that. And then I came back and once I came back, I was like, oh my gosh, I beat it in the first try. Well, why is that? Because you're refreshed. You're looking at it with new eyes. You can actually see things that you haven't seen before. And sometimes when you're playing or painting, you're a little tired, like physically tired of being there for hours and hours and hours because you get so involved and so lost and so you know deliciously lost in the hobby that you, you grow tired and you don't really see all the things that you need to see but when you give it a break and come back you really grasp all of, all, all of the model all the details and things you may have missed earlier when you were tired so again, I love doing gemstones. I'm going to do the same and take my time with the reds as well to show you what I do with red lenses, which is a similar effect. So if you don't know how to do lenses or, or gemstones, which for me as a hobbyist, when I used to look at these things, I was like, wow, that's amazing. I'll never be able to do that. Well, you know, it's not crazy hard. It really isn't. It just takes a little practice like everything else, you know. Um, 
Again, really sorry about the, the camera focusing in and out. I'm still learning the camera, brand new camera, great camera. I mean, really amazing video. Uh, I'm just learning how to, to operate it. So it's my limited capacity uh, and my limited time uh, <laughs> this time of year uh, with work-related things to actually delve, do, do a deep delve, uh, a deep dive with the camera and the materials. Also, I'm thinking about uh, doing some Google Hangouts or maybe Hobby Hangouts or something like that where I can really, really get into uh, hobbying with friends, uh, other YouTubers that you may know. Alrighty, now I'm going back with a white and that white is going to go on the bottom and then just a little dot on the top to really, really enforce uh, where the light is coming from, how it's shining through the middle and then exiting through the other end. And again, this allows for a lot of forgiveness, okay? Um, what you do have to worry about is how much paint is on your bristles. You don't want to overload it where it just pulls into the recesses. That's something you do not want to do. But if you're just painting just a little bit of paint, go slowly, take your time, do little layers. It really does help out. Um, and it is really forgiven to do lenses. I never thought I would be able to do it. And now I'm really getting a great effect, uh, to my, in my opinion, with this. Alrighty, some dried blood, that's the darkest, some scarlet, which is the mid-tome, and intense red uh, for the really, really highlights. Uh, so we have all those three colors. Now, you can use other colors. Uh, I've heard war colors was really amazing, and they do have that tonality from the dark to the mid-tones to the light, and it has everything in between. And I'm really hoping for, if possible, uh, to get my hands on some of those war color paints. I hear they're ultra matte and really great. I also like the, the Scale 75 stuff and really would like some of that as well. But, you know, one thing at a time, right? But uh, again, here we are, the same exact concept where we're adding the mid-tone, that dried blood, the effects, really great kind of crimson, but you can use any crimson you want to. Um, <clears throat> and then some dead white here at the top and just to add a dot on the top and then on the bottom you want to like a little streak. Now you could do a dot on the top and the bottom a little streak because some people do a streak on the top and a streak on the bottom. I mean, it's up to you. Whatever you like. I like the dot on the top and then like um, just like almost edge highlighting the rim of where the, the, the lightest uh, red would be. All right, let's talk about a little bit about this model in it of itself. It comes from that box set. This is part of my Get It Painted uh, challenge for Edith Beer, who uh, posted up to get your stuff uh, painted up for the new year. It's a new year's resolution here uh, to get these space wolves painted. And I will paint these space wolves. That's it. I have put my foot down. I have a lot of models that I'd love to get my hands on, but I am under, uh, and it's, it drives people insane. I am under the edict of you don't open a new cereal box until you finish the last one period you know and i do not i do not deviate from that and some people say i have willpower i say i have ocd <laughs> it's just, i need order um and that's me and that's why every time i do my, my hobby desk and everything else i have to always clean uh to the extreme everything before i start a new project it just helps me organize and that's my personal advice and you know uh, i work with a messy desk while i'm painting a project and I leave everything that I'm using on that project on the table until that project's done and then everything comes down and then something else comes, you know, then it all comes back, you know, even if it needs to come back. Now for the Space Wolves, that in itself is a project. Now I do want to tell you a little bit about why I, um, I do paint the Reaper bones in between these projects and that is to allow or afford me time to be able to do an entire unit of these guys. So instead of just painting one miniature and then posting it, I'll paint a unit of Terminators or just five models in the space of time that, you know, one would air um, on my Wednesday. And I do keep, I do try to keep consistent with my channel. I haven't missed a Wednesday yet, so I'm going to keep doing that. Okay, let's go on to the next thing. I love those lenses. Looks great. All right, some blue ink diluted. And what we're doing is, is a glaze. And I really do like the Scale 75 inks because they glaze so, so, so nicely. Um, 
So while it's diluted, what I'm doing is I'm getting little cracks and little crevices inside the gun. Uh, you want to create a dark and then an outline of sky blue and then uh, some gray within that gun. At least that's what I wanted to do. And I mean, it came out well and I really, I, I can't, I can't uh, say it any more than I can. The, first off, Scale 75 have, has beautiful, beautiful colors. I mean, really rich, beautiful pigments and such a deviation from what I have uh, as far as paint ranges are concerned. And speaking of paint ranges, I usually, when I buy uh, paint, I usually just don't buy one, I buy the range, you know? And um, that's, again, <laughs> I'm going all in or not, right? That's just the way I do things. Um, and it really does help. And the thing that it helps is that if you're looking for that certain color that I don't know what I should paint this, oh wow, this color looks amazing. Well, you just pull it off the shelf and there you go. It's now on your table and now you get to use it and play it and manipulate with it and just discover. Part of the painting process here and has been for since I started painting miniatures is the painting process to be able to uh, grow as a painter, to be able to learn new things per model. So with this model, the first thing that I'm going to tell you is this is the first time ever using uh, inten the intensity set um, from scale 75. So I really do wanted to try that out with this. And I'm telling you right now, I love it. And I'm learning as I go here. And again, every model I paint is for me to improve as a painter. And this is helping me right here. Well, this is a little back and forth here. And you know, when you're painting these miniatures, you do go back and forth. Oh, I didn't like that. Oh, I went too far. Let me fix the mistake and it's fine. All right, some sky blue highlight with some flow aid. Now, I did mention flow aid. I do have a video about flow aid. I'm going to put it right up here. And I use flow aid whenever I'm doing edge highlighting. I just like the way that the paint just literally flows off the brush. Now, there is no one tried and true method into including flow aid uh, into your brush with paint because different paints have different kind of viscosity and uh, they have different kind of thicknesses. So dilution is dependent on which paint you're using, how much it's exposed to the air and how long it's been, the temperature of the room. There are so many variables. So when it comes to flow aid, when it comes to knowing when is when, what I usually do is take uh, a piece of sprue, right, that I have primed on the side that has an edge. Right? And what I do is I use that as practice. Okay, I just leave it on the side. I leave it as practice. So I'm dipping my, my brush into the paint. I'm dipping it into the flow aid. I'm dipping it into some water just to dilute it a little bit. I'm wiping it off on something. And then I am just edge highlighting or trying to edge highlight uh, on the sprue that I already have primed. Uh, I would usually prime it even black or whatever the miniature is colored. I do have black, um, gray, and white. They also have a lot of different uh, color range when it comes to Steinle Res, and they're really going into the metallics now and all that stuff. I haven't tried any of that. Um, I do like the white, the gray, and the black for now. So I think for now, that's where I am uh, with that. Wow, this gun's coming out pretty sweet. It takes a lot of experimenting with this gun to get it to exactly where I want it to be. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm using that previous metal mixture of that copper, uh, as well as the gold, as well as the, the burnt uh, pale metal. And this is from Vallejo um, Metal Color. They're amazing. And I'm using that to actually weather or rust almost or add color depth or variation, whatever you want to call it, that brownish kind of look uh, to the metal because in the painting it one color metal, it just lacks the depth that I really want. Now I've been learning how to do non-metallic metal, which I'm still trying to improve on, but now I'm trying to do some true metallic metal and add some dimension to that. Alrighty, so there it is, pale burnt metal and intense blue. And that now those parts I really hit on the 
on the edges here, uh, as well as a lot of the rivets. I, I like that blue coming through, again, adding color. We have the warm uh, rust effects, and now we're gonna have the blue effects to actually offset that, and they're complementary colors. It makes you look at that metal piece just a little more differently, in, in my opinion, and uh, just hitting it off, just on certain areas there. And really makes a difference, really does make a difference there. Um, and it's very subtle now, wait till it dries, <laughs> I should say. Uh, okay, so next up, I wanted to do something different. Um, and they say to paint the, the face gold, but I didn't want to paint the face gold uh, of this wolf on the tech uh, priest's uh, mechanical servo kind of arm. Um, but I wanted to go black. I did. I like the way that it looks. So I'm just going to do it black here. All right, next up is this pauldron. Uh, on the side, and I'm gonna paint that uh, bone uh, color as well. And there's a lot of different formulas out here for bone. Um, sometimes what I do is I prime it white if I want it really light, or sometimes I, pr I prime it a little darker. Uh, some kind of earth tone or some mid-brown or some heavy brown from um, uh, the extra opaque series of game color Vallejo. Alrighty, so after that's done, and I, and I showed you how to how I painted, um, I showed you how I painted the bone before with the white, and then the uh, the bone white, and then the Cerebon sepia. So now this time, what I'm doing here is I'm going to start to paint the actual handles and the grips, and I'm going to paint it red. So I'm going to start off with some heavy brown. Uh, from Vallejo Game Color. And next off, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit it with some Scarlet um, uh, as well. Oh, and don't forget that we're doing the hammer. The, don't forget the little recesses on the top there also need to be heavy brown because they're also gonna be red as well for this. So I have to actually hit that. Notice how I'm holding the brushes, leaning on my hand and the actual um, caulk. And then I came back and I'm doing some uh, red here, some scarlet from Model Color. And that's going to be like my mid-tone right there. And um, I do glaze the intensity ink on top of that next, right here. Uh, and then tone it down with some crimson shade. Yep. So some crimson shade just to give it an evil, uh, even tone. Just letting you know that this hammer is the last piece that I'm gonna be working on for the, uh, for the assembled model because everything after I painted it here, I assembled it off camera. Uh, I didn't wanna waste any time and I'm trimming. This is a four hour video that I trimmed down to 23 minutes and 37 seconds or so, something like that. Um, <laughs> so there was a lot of trimming of the fat here, so to speak. And that's something I wanted to bring to you. Let me know if you do like this new four format, this quick format, um, or you'd rather the paint and chat. All right, some red ink to highlight just the tips. I'm just dotting the little, little tips of each one of the handle pieces. And I wanted to go from darker red on the bottom to lighter red on the top, reflecting that light is actually coming from the top. Now, everything is not completely uniform here, and I'm still working on that. Alrighty, so next up is some gold, and gold goes over very well on top of that black base. And I'm just getting the tips of the actual design that they have on the hammer. I think it came out great to that effect. Uh, and just almost edge highlighting on top of it. Be very, very careful not to get in the recess. But if you do, just paint it over with black. And finally, some dead white and doing some bone color onto that uh, top piece. Uh, on the bone area there and just finishing up the hammer and that is all there is to it. Well, I hope you like this video. Catch you on the outro.
Well, here it is. Just want to let you know as a disclaimer, there are many different ways to paint this. The techniques that I showed you in this video is not the only way to paint it. There are many several different ways. I just showed you what I did to get this effect and I think it looks pretty cool. Well, thank you for tuning in and if you like this video, like, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush.